Welcome everybody, it's Barino. Welcome to another tune-up. I'm really excited that you're here today with me. We're gonna have a really good one today. Let me just turn on the phone so then the folks can hear on the phone. Hold on a second. All right, so we're live. Here's another tune-up, another fun event that we're gonna have together. I'm gonna turn the Q&A mode on. For those of you guys who are on the phone, let me see, do we have audio? Yes, we do. Just want to make sure, because we had one one of the tune-ups where we had no Q audio for a while. Started. All right, okay. so we're in Q&A. Okay. Should be alive now. Should be alive now. All right. All right. All right. Yes. Cool. All right. I hear the audio. Good. Welcome, everybody. It's Varina. Welcome to another tune-up from Real... Do you hear that? <laughs> That's the feed. Now, if you call in, uh, you're going to be a little... Uh, a little confused maybe because there is a slight delay between the audio you're going to hear live on the phone and what you see on your screen. With that, welcome. I am Borino, your coach, your pal, and this is another live broadcast of the Business Tune-Up. So we have a lot of stuff going on today. I have a lot of things I want to cover. There's a book I want to recommend to you. I want to show you a strategy that I've learned many, many years ago as an actor. How do you remember dialogues? How do you remember certain scripts and certain uh, objection handlers or questions you don't want to forget when you're in a situation where you talk to a seller or even a buyer and you want to be on the spot without using memorized canned scripts that sound kind of artificial and annoying and they usually don't work very well. So I'm going to share that with you. Um, what else? I have a um, help because uh, several of you send me emails about what to do um, as a new agent how to compete with more experienced agents, someone who has a long track record, maybe a team, maybe a big advertising budget. How do you go up, up against that? So we're going to share that. I have an invitation for you to come to Washington, D.C. We're going to do a live workshop that's going to be really killer. That's coming up in June. I guess that's it. So with that, let me double check, make sure we can. All right, we got the first call. Wow, this is cool. First one. Hey, it's Borino. Who is this? Welcome to the show. Hi. Can you hear me? Hello? I guess not. There is a delay, so if, if the phone is uh, off a little bit with the video, that's usually what happens. Anyway, Kristen, can you hear me? Hello? Oh, Kristen just joined us. So if you have any questions, if you're on the phone and you want to talk to me live, just hit star six on your phone. That's going to put you in the queue and uh, we can chat. Okay, hello? Welcome to the Barina. Bar Barino. Yes, who is this? Pam. Hey Pam, how you doing girl? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks for calling in. You're the first oh, one. Thanks for having the call. Of course, first rock star. What's on your mind, Pam? So I had a question about, I just had a listing appointment the other day, uh -huh. and I wanted to know how truthful you're supposed to be up front because what happened was I got into the situation where you know I had checked out their house in advance uh -huh. I had gone and they were very impressed that I had taken the time to uh, check it out in advance and then I went back and we're sitting down and we're talking about things and uh, they're telling me how fabulous their house is everything about it and they are in love with it and all the stuff they did they spent so many thousand dollars uh -huh. and blah 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 and that's all great. And, and I said, oh, yeah, you have your house looking really good. There were some things about it, though, that, um, you know, I, I wanted to say, but I didn't know how much I should say. For instance, they don't have any hardwood floors. They have a small kitchen, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But when they're raving and raving and raving, when's the time to pop in and, you know, be a little truthful? <laughs> okay. Uh, great question, Pat. That's absolutely a great question. So let's go to the big board, big ass board. We updated the board. See how it is better, the quality. Pam, can you see it on the video? Do you have the video feed? I can feed? see you. I'm not sure why. I, don't, I see you shaking your head. I think you're listening to my question. That's yes, it's because always... there is a delay. Yeah, the video you're watching is about 60 seconds behind the audio feed. But the, this is a new board we got in the Barino headquarters here in uh, Falls Church, Virginia. It's not as shiny as the old one, if you remember. So it's going to be easier for you guys to see and read my notes. So here's the process you need to set up when you talk to the sellers. Um, there's the first initial, initial contact. 
That's when you met the sellers through prospecting, through advertising. They may have reached out to you or you may have contacted them if it's an expired listing, knocked on a door. Here is when the magic starts happening. This is where first impression is established at the very beginning. And what happens is we're going to do a special session for you guys just on a seller psychology because there's a lot going on. Some of it consciously where the logically thing is Pam a good agent? Does she have a good marketing plan? Does she work for a reputable company? But majority of the stuff is happening subconsciously underneath it all that triggers certain reactions, certain emotions, certain responses, whether they like you, trust you, respect you, or they don't. So we're going to take it all apart because once you understand how it works, you will be able to ethically, obviously, influence these people. So when you met them first, there was a first impression established. They measure three things. And this is how human beings operate. It goes back millions of years. We have not changed much in the way our neurobiology has been wired. They measure your power, your reputation, your wealth, and your status. Those are the things that they look for. How powerful you are, what is your status. Now status is only on and off. Either high status or low status. Power, high or low. Either you're powerful, you're considered powerful or not. Popular, either popular or not. So they immediately start categorizing you. What they set up is called a frame. This is how they're going to perceive you, the interactions with you, the stuff you tell them, the stuff you share with them through this frame. This happens very, very quickly. Less than four seconds and they already have a frame established about you. So that happens at the beginning. Now, based on this frame, they start collecting evidence that supports that first impression, that initial frame. And it's literally like a filter. So let's say, Pam, I know you, we've worked together before, we've interacted before. Confident, good agent, high status agent, knowledgeable. Now they're collecting evidence that supports that frame. So they start perceiving everything that supports that decision or that first impression. That's when the logic comes in. The logic works as a sounding board. What do I feel in my instinct, in my subconscious, in the quick decision that's done by our crocodile brain, our croc brain? Does it support it or not? Now, if there's a big gap and a discrepancy between how they feel about you and what they think, then of course you have to readjust. But that's what happens at the beginning. Now you start interacting with them. You have some follow up calls, you have some more interactions, you send them some mail until the pre listing interview. Pre listing interview. This is where you need to reinforce your high status. This is where it happens. When you do the pre listing, they get the pre listing package, you confirm the appointment. Now you notice how much of this happens before you even meet with them. Now, of course, to answer Pam's question, how honest should I be? You should be 100% honest. You should be 100% honest. Now, there's honest and there is honest. There is honest that serves the purpose, meaning you to get the business and help them to move somewhere else. And there is honest just by being an asshole, being, being arrogant. So there's a difference. But be honest, obviously. So a lot of this stuff happens before you actually sit down with them at the listing presentation. Now the actual listing presentation happens. Okay? Now notice how much evidence and how much first impression and how, much, how many assumptions they already have about you. Right, wrong, true, false, none of that really matters. In their opinion, they believe to be true. Now, with this all, where do you come in and tell them, well, Mr. Mr. Seller, I mean, your house is good. I'm sure there's a fine buyer for it, but it has certain drawbacks as well. When do you come in? First impression is set up, high status agent. If you are perceived as an expert who's trying to help, your words and your opinions and your suggestions, some of them very helpful, you might suggest, well, we got to replace the carpet. This will enhance the value of the property, will enhance the first impression. It will impress the buyers and we'll have a better chance of getting a better offer very, very quickly. If you, if you say something like this from the position of a high status authority, somebody who knows what they're talking about, from a standpoint of a helpful counselor, it has a very different quality and a different reaction from the seller than when you just come and says, oh my God, look at this carpet, what a piece of shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> so you got to be not very um, sensitive to what is the information you're sharing, why are you sharing it, how will it benefit the seller, and from what position you're delivering this information. Are you trying to help? Are you trying to figure out a solution that may enhance the property value, increase their chance of getting it sold, get a good price for it, or are you just criticizing? And you may say the very same thing, the same way, but based on this initial first impression, it will be perceived differently. You may be perceived as just an agent who's criticizing, 
who is knocking their house down because uh, you don't want to price it at the price you know it's going to sell or what they want. Or you may be a helpful counselor who says, John, Mary, you guys have a great house. It has a lot of positive features and I guarantee you there is a buyer out there who will fall in love with it just the way you guys did. Now in order for us to get that buyer, to get them excited and to get a good offer on the table that we can actually close so you can be in Florida three, four months from now, there are several things we need to do to prepare the house to make it as close to a showcase condition as humanly possible. Doing this will shorten the marketing time, increase the number of potential buyers who will be interested in it, bring us a good offer and help us close it as soon as possible. That's your goal, right? You confirm with them. Of course, that's what sellers want, right? And then you proceed. So well, based on that, here are some suggestions and you just go through them. So you don't necessarily have to criticize that they have a small kitchen. However, Pointing these things out will do a couple of things. It will reinforce your status as a high status expert who knows what they're talking about and it will help you bring them to reality. Okay. Now, when is the good time to do that? Um, the best time to do it is when you do the initial walkthrough real quick and you don't have to say much. You can do just, you have your notepad out or use an iPad to take notes as you're walking through the property. You just kind of pause, say, hmm, you look around and you notice. So let's say there's a small kitchen and you're in that small kitchen. You just pause a little bit. You don't need to do much in terms of commenting or giving them a lot of information and just make a quick note and you keep going. Or if there's a squeaky floor, there's a stain on the carpet. It also does another thing that's really cool. It shows, demonstrates to them that you pay attention to details, that you pay attention, that you are an expert who notices little things, both positive and negative. Now, if there is something positive about the house, it's okay. You can comment on it. You can mention it. But also notice things there are potential drawbacks. Okay? Now, I know this is a big setup to answer Pam's question, but it is important because how the answer is perceived will make a very big difference on how the seller will react and what will be the outcome. What was the outcome, by the way, Pam? Did you get that listing? <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Okay. So now, where do you bring these things up? they may or may not be important. Something like a small kitchen, chances of them knocking a couple walls down and enlarging the kitchen, not very big, right? That's not a possibility, not really. That's not realistic. But it may influence the value and the saleability of the property. Am I right? Right, Pam? Yeah. Okay, so when do you bring it up? The best time, you comment on it first, you notice it, you make a note. Then as you go through your actual presentation, and the presentation needs to happen in several steps in order for it to be effective. Uh, by the way, Pam, are you coming to, to Washington, D.C. in June? I haven't decided yet. All right. I think you're going to decide at the end of this call because this is exactly what we're going to work on for two days. And this is not a sales pitch for the seminar. This is to help you guys out. But if you really need to master this, if you get lost here, if the sellers take control, if you're, hard, if you're having a really hard time communicating with them and showing them the reality, then this is really a good place to be because this is not a seminar where you're just going to sit and take notes. We're going to be doing this stuff for two days straight. Okay, so just a little sales pitch. Now, so here is how the presentation needs to go. First, you establish trust, connection, and report. Connection, trust, and report. That's step one. That's where the first impression happens, okay? A lot of connection. They must feel first that they can trust you, they like you, and they respect you. If they don't, you're perceived as just, as just as another salesperson, right? Just another agent. So that's step one. Step two, you need to go through a process of the power questions. And this can happen either during the pre-listing interview, the first meeting with them. When it happens, doesn't matter as much as it needs to happen before you actually sit down during the presentation. The power questions allow you to deepen the report and connection with them. And some of the best questions you can ask, well, Tell me, what is it about the new home that you guys expect to have that you don't have already here? In other words, you're asking why are they moving? You want to determine two things. What is their core driving emotion? What is driving them? Because it's not about a bigger house. It's not about a smaller house. It is something else, something more powerful. In order for you to help them, you first need to understand where they're coming from. And in order for you to understand that, you need to know what is the emotion that's driving them. So that's why the power questions are there. You want to open up below just better school district and a smaller house because our kids left and all that. There's something below that that makes them tick, that makes them either get away from something painful or go some, towards something pleasurable. Okay? So use the power questions. This also deepens the connection because you allow them to share with you their true feelings. What are they afraid of? That's one of the greatest questions you can ask the seller. Well, what is your biggest concern? What are you guys really worried about? 
What keeps you awake at night? You can be, well, we list with the wrong agent. We, we won't get enough for our house. We sell too soon and we could, if we get impatient, we may have gotten more for our house. So there'd be many things that they have as concerns. And it's powerful if you set up circumstances where they trust you enough to be honest and open with you, where they can tell you these things. So that's step two. Step three, you create desire. You can't really create it, but you can tap into it. You can bring it up. What is the real desire? What is the passion? What is the emotion that's making them go through this? Then you create tension. Many agents skip this because you feel like, well, I need to be very popular and very liked in order for them to do business with me. Not necessarily. Remember when you look for something, like uh, I'll give you a quick example. <laughs> I recently bought a new wine fridge. I wanted a new fridge for our kitchen for, um, for our wines. And um, there was this specific one I wanted. It's a specific model, holds about, I don't know, 30, 40 bottles. And all of a sudden, it was hard to find. Well, guess what happened? I wanted it more now because I couldn't get it. I couldn't find it. It wasn't that easy. And it took some searching to finally find the size and the model that I wanted. So there was some tension that increased my desire. And then you provide a solution. Okay, now the solution is, of course, you are the solution. They need to go through you in order for them to get to the goal that they want to get to. And you show them how. So now, you're in the middle of a presentation or going towards the end. You walk through all the steps. You give them all the steps. The emotional level is high. They're excited. You feel their desire. You feel like, there's my darling. Hi, darling. <laughs> uh, you want to go through the resolution, and now you're on the comps. Now you're actually going, oh, well, let's talk about what your property will sell for. If you feel their expectations are too high, they want too much for it, the, they don't see the reality that, for example, small kitchen will be a hindrance because many other homes that have sold recently in the area have a larger kitchen, then it's time to bring it up. And you can do it in a very elegant way. You pull up stats and information that's important about their property, you list it, and you start comparing properties next to it. And you can say things like, well, compared to the property on 1234 Oak Street, that property was in a little better condition, was very nicely upgraded, had a larger kitchen than yours. Many buyers consider kitchen one of the vital parts of the house. That's where they congregate. That's where people socialize. That's where the family gets together just like mine or yours. So now you did two things. Now you brought down their expectation closer to reality, and you also elevated your status as an expert. Because now you know what you're talking about. You clearly indicated, I've seen the property. I know what I'm talking about. I know my market well. Because underneath it all, it's going to come down to only three things. We said that before. They must like you, trust you, and respect you. And if they do, they will see the reality. If the core drive and emotion is high, if their desire to move is high, if their excitement to live somewhere else is high, or the pain to live where they live now is high, they will do business with you. Why wouldn't they? Is that making all sense, Pam? Um, yeah, it makes sense. I, with these people, the funny thing was they were, they were liking everything I said, uh -huh. and they, but, but they also had this. They were so stuck on their house and all the money they had put in it, and they were saying things like, "We spent thirty thousand dollars on our basement, uh -huh. and we expect to get at least half of that back." And I'm like. Oh my gosh. Okay, well let's well let's role play that real quick, Pam. Now, I need to preset it. You have a high core driving emotion, you do want to move. Otherwise I wouldn't be sitting there wasting your time or mine. We have some connection and some report already going, and I have established as a, that I am a high status expert. I'm a real estate authority. That's already been established. Okay? If you haven't done that, you need to go back and fix that before you can move forward. Because no matter what you present or say to them, is not perceived as from somebody who's trying to help, who's an authority, but it is from somebody who's trying to get the listing to make a buck. You're saying the same things. You have good intentions, but it's perceived and received differently. Is that making sense, Pam? Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's do a quick role play. This will help you guys out. This is really good if you get stuck with a seller like that. Well, Pam, based on the analysis we've done, and clearly you can see by the numbers, your property should be listed at 475000 and we can comfortably expect to sell for about four hundred sixty-five to 470000 Once we pay off your mortgage and all the costs, you're going to walk over $300,000 cash. Is it enough to get you guys to that, that nice new home down in Florida so you can enjoy it by the summers here? Would that work for you? So, so now I'm supposed to be them, right? Yeah, you're the seller. Well... 
And this is exactly what happened. He looked at his wife and he said, well, what do you think? And they thought about it and they said, well, you know, we, we put a lot of money into this house. Mm-hmm. We have a list. You have the list that we have, right? And yes. we put at least $70,000 worth of extras into this house. Mm-hmm. And I've been watching all of the television shows out there. Yes. And they say when you put, we put these Corian countertops in our kitchen, we're supposed to be able to get 70% of that back. I've read every magazine article out there. And, for instance, we put $30,000 into our basement. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to just have the $30,000 that I put into my basement and not get any of it back. I mean, I'm expecting that I'm going to get at least 50% of that back. Mm-hmm. So what you're saying is the three hundred thousand dollars is not enough to get you where you want to go. You would expect a higher price. I just want to make sure I understand where you guys are coming from. Well, I'm saying that actually the price that you've put on the house is where we think we should be, but we just don't want these people coming in and insulting us and telling sure. us that you know our house doesn't have good stuff because we have put all the best stuff in our house. Pam, I totally understand. Now here's what I'm going to walk you through. This is a process, it's part of the Presentation Plus and part of the course we're going to do in June. But here's how it works. It's called emotional decoupling. And it's a very important process. Now, it needs to be in the sequence. You need to do the things before that in order for it to work. But here's how it works. Pam, I totally understand. I very much appreciate what you're saying. Most sellers feel the same way, and I get it. See, there are two things. There's a home, and there's a house. A home to you guys, may be worth a million more. There is no price tag to put on it. A home is where you put all this work into to enjoy it, to have it just the way you want it, to live your comfortable life. And you spend a great amount of years here. So there are memories. There's the Christmas you spend here, the Thanksgiving, and all that. There is no way to put a price tag on it. We're not here to discuss what your home is worth. But then, once you move out, instead of a home, we're going to have a house. There's a huge difference. House means Four walls, some windows, walls, square footage, a little bit of a yard. It becomes a commodity, just like a car or stock. And a house, unlike home, has a very specific price tag. And that price tag may or may not reflect what it's worth, but what it reflects, and the number I'm giving you, is strictly based on what is the most a qualified buyer would be willing to pay for a house like this, to live in this neighborhood right now. And what is the most, a bank is willing to lend to that buyer so they can get the loan, so they can buy your house, so you guys can be in Florida three months from now. Does that make sense? Yeah, that's so exactly what I said to them. Okay. So now, knowing that, the sad truth is, and I hate to tell you this, but I must tell you the truth. You expect me to be honest. You and I do not control the price. The money you put into the lovely basement in the upgrades were to enjoy it. You obviously didn't discuss it with a real estate expert first and ask them, well, how much do you think will be a return of our investment? You did it because you wanted it a certain way. Now, if the buyer sees a value in it, they will be excited about it, but I guarantee you they will not take out a calculator and calculate what your cost was and add it to the sales price. It doesn't work that way. You and I, unfortunately, do not have any control over price. Only the buyer does and only the bank does. That's it. The decision you and I need to make tonight is this enough to get you where you want to be? Because based on my expertise and based on the analysis and just common sense looking at these numbers, it's clear that your property will sell between 460 and 465. What do you guys want to do? Okay, so and what they said was they said I I didn't say exactly what do you want to do. I didn't do that because they had already said, well, we have to get our house ready and we want to wait until May 1st. Sure. We'll get the paperwork signed right now. This will give us a little bit of a head start. It'll be easier for you and for me to get everything rolling. And then come May 1st or that whatever. Was mistake, that was the mistake I made. I didn't, I, I didn't jump on to the, all right, let's just fill out the paperwork with that date on it. That's where I messed up. Yes, and that's okay. You're not alone. It's, it's, many agents don't feel comfortable asking for the signature, but remember this, Pam. If you get the presentation right, and you can, it's a skill. I learned it. I've trained many other people to do this. Getting the signature, if you decide to work with these people, if you feel like they have a good core drive and emotion, they're nice people, I want to work with them, I want this listing because I know I can sell it, I can help them. Getting the signature at the end is a natural ending. It's the logical step. 
It's the final step. Let me just switch the camera here so you can see. This is the final step, is the contract. It's the resolution. It's the solution to everything you've built up up to this point. You will often, if you do this right, and it's really not that hard. There are just certain things you have to remember. There are certain dialogues you have to remember, not memorizing scripts, obviously, but certain things you have to do to take them on this journey. On this, it's almost like an emotional roller coaster because you go up from excitement down to tension, up excitement, down tension, all the way to solution. The contract is something they desire because their brain is wired this way. This is not selling. This is neurobiology. This is human psychology. This is how we think, how we feel, how we operate, how we make decisions. Every single one of us, every single time. So you're just knowing this, use it to their advantage and yours. Their advantage, of course, they want to move. They want a competent agent. They need help. And to your advantage, you're going to help them and you're going to get paid well for your work. But to get to that point, they will many times say, okay, what's our next step? What do we do next? You will hear that frequently. Because this is yeah, not something yeah, they want to okay. deal with. <laughs> I, I, basically, I did practically everything there. I just, I, I, what I was thinking about with the kitchen was when they were still stuck on the price, even yeah. though I had gone through all of that about, I did even did, it's a commodity, you know, and it's for your own enjoyment when you do these things. I, uh -huh. I put all that stuff in there, not exactly the same way you said it, but it was all in there, and they were nodding their heads to it all. Okay. And then they still kept getting stuck on all the stuff they had put in their house. Yes. That's when I thought to myself, oh, because I never really said anything about their kitchen. I figured, well, I don't, you know, I didn't let me just really Let me just there. point out something, Pam, to you. When they do that, now I haven't been, I, I haven't met them, I haven't talked to them, I didn't see you do the presentation, but I can venture to say there are only two reasons why they're doing it. They're using okay. the kitchen or the improvements. It is not the real reason why they're procrastinating, why they're hesitant. The real reason is only one of two things. Three. Number one, they don't trust you. They don't like you, trust you, and respect you enough to make the next, to take the next step with you. That's number one. That's a possibility number one. Possibly number two, they're still emotionally attached to the house and they're having a hard time letting go. And they're just using something that's tangible in front of them, like the kitchen and improvements, to stop or stall the process. And then number three, they don't have strong enough core driving emotion. They're taking the logical steps. Their actions may indicate they want to do something. But the outcome, the result they're getting, clearly states otherwise. They haven't signed the listing. They haven't taken the next logical step to make the move. So it's one of those three things. Your job as the expert communicator, as the expert counselor, you need to know what it is. Either they don't trust you, respect you, and like you, meaning they don't take your uh, advice and, and information you give them, because they're afraid of something that either you just want a listing, you're not distinguished enough from any other agent, there's not enough trust. They have a hard time letting go. I mean, if they lived in the property for 20, 30 years, there's a lot of attachment, a lot of emotions. You have to kind of walk them through it and help them through it. Or moving just doesn't matter to them as much. They think it does, logically it does, but not emotionally. And if the emotion is not there, they're not going anywhere. Was that helpful? Yeah, that was good. Well, um, with no. these people, it was all that stuff at the very end. It was at the very end when uh -huh. they said, well, maybe we'll just have to stay here. And I was like, what? Uh, see? <laughs> After, yeah. They were like so motivated to move. And, and, and it was only because if they couldn't get a certain price, they were going to say, well, maybe we'll have to stay here. So I don't know. It exactly is not about the price, means. though. They will make it about the price. They will use the price. I don't want to use the word excuse, but the, to rationalize it. But the real reason is not the price. It's never about the money. Never, ever about the money. It's always either lack of emotion, emotional attachment to the property, or lack of trust. One of those. You need to go back and find out what it is. Sit down for a cup of coffee with them and have a very honest, open chat. No agenda, no pressure, just a very open conversation for 5-10 minutes and find out what it really is. Because I'll, I'll bet you many times even the sellers don't know. They simply take the rational explanation thinking, well, it is about the kitchen. No, it's not. I bet you if you spend 10 minutes with them in a very casual environment, have a cup of coffee with them, you'll find out what it is. And you'll be able to help them. Because sometimes staying where, where they are might be a good solution. Yes? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, Pam. Awesome. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much. This was very cool. 
Good start. <laughs> thanks. Oh, thanks, Pam. That's Pam, the real estate rock star that's coming to Washington, D.C. Now, speaking of Washington, D.C., just wanted to invite you, if you're considering something like this where you really need to master communication, speak with confidence, set up high status agent first impression from the beginning. If you really want to know how to do that, because it is a skill that can be developed, that can be learned, come on down. I'll give you a URL or you can just go there right now and you can fill out an application. You can't buy it. It's just you and I will get on the phone, we'll talk for about 10, 15 minutes to make sure you're a good fit for the workshop, to make sure this really is for you, and then we'll see. We'll take it from there. So go to goborino.com. I will pop a URL in just a moment. All right, that was a good call. Thanks, Pam. Thanks for that. That was Thanks, really, Marino. really helpful. Come on down to DC, girl. Don't mess around. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's the book I wanted to tell you about. This is something that you're gonna read very, very quickly. It's by Dan Zadra. Dan Zadra, it's called Where Will You Be Five Years From Today? Check this out. Really cool little book. And it is not as much a read as it is to get you inspired. You know, it's only a few pages, like 30 pages at the most. It's kind of a big format, but it has some really good stuff in it. So if you want to go beyond just regular goals, goal setting, the, the standard stuff we do January 1st and forget January 7th, if you want to find out more what really matters to you, if you want to really map out your future in a more controlled way where things just, just don't happen to you, but you build them, you design them, and you live them, really good stuff. Very, very, very good stuff. I, I really enjoy it. How to have adventures. When was the last time you did something for the first time? How to have more excitement in life, more passion, more success. Where will you be five years from today? Really, really good read. Highly recommend it. few bucks on Amazon. All right, now, if you guys want to chat, here's the number, 805-399-1200. Then you're going to enter the code for this conference, 143153, and you have to hit the pound sign. And then to be put in the Q&A queue, you're just going to hit star six, and then we're going to chat. So here's the next question. This one is from Al. How to deal with competition from other agents? Al write me, write, wrote me an email. Top agents in my area have good seniority and can provide plenty of results. How about those folks like me that have limited or little results or listings? What can I do instead? That's a really good question. What can you do? Maybe you have a few years under your belt. Maybe you're new. You're dealing with expired listings for sale by owners, any type of client. Some of them do like experienced agents. How do you combat that? How can you get listings as a new agent or a newer agent or inexperienced agents without a long track record? Can you still succeed? Well, the answer is of course. You absolutely can. So check this out. You deal with this, the newbie curse, right? How long have you been in the business? How many homes have you sold? How many listings do you have? Questions that many, many sellers have and want answers to and valid questions. But here's what's underneath them. We already talked about it with Pam. What they really want to know is, can you be trusted? Because think about it, if they can like you, trust you, and respect you, if they really trust you that you will do a good job for them, they're in good hands, they will do business with you, regardless of what company you work for, regardless of uh, how many years you've been in the business, none of that really would matter to them, would it? Regardless of how big your marketing plan, how big your marketing budget is, it really comes down to they like you, they trust you, they respect you. Now, you still need to know your stuff, you still need to be the expert, you still need to know how to list a property, how to get it sold, but it really comes down to trust. So now, knowing that, well, let's go back. Can you be trusted? Remember this, there will always be sellers who will only do business with whatever agent. Young, old, tall, short, experienced, inexperienced, it doesn't matter. That means you will never get them all, but you can have plenty. Don't confuse being new and being incompetent. Those are two very different things. You need to be confident. There are plenty of 20-year veterans who are needy, low status, incompetent, and broke. Just because somebody has been at it for many years doesn't necessarily mean they're successful. It just means they've been at it for a long time. So let me ask you, what do you bring to the table? What do you have? What makes you unique? And remember, offering hard work and honesty would be like a cell phone company promoting a dial tone. It's not enough. You have something unique about you. This could be your passion. It could be excitement your expertise with computers, with the latest technology, with social media. There's all kinds of things you bring to the table. Focus on that. 
And they will not believe in you until you believe in you. That means you have to believe. I can get this done. I'm a great agent. I'm the best thing that happened to these people. I'm honest. I know how to get stuff done. They can trust me. So be honest. What is the issue when you don't get listings? What is it really? What do you think it really is? And the answer is the real issue is always a fear. You feel insecure about something. Maybe the way you communicate or maybe you don't know the market well enough. Maybe you don't know how to handle a good presentation. Maybe the seller takes control and it's hard to wrestle it back. Believe me, speaking from experience, I've been there. So now, you're going to hear things like, you haven't sold a house in our area. Let me give you a little dialogue and I'll show you in just a moment how you can memorize these without memorizing. How you won't sound like a telemarketer, how you will not be just an annoying uh, salesperson. You will sound genuine but still know exactly how to handle it. So check this out. This is a good one. David, that's a really good point. You're right. I have not sold home, many homes in this area. I don't base my business on price range or a geographic location. Last couple of months, I've talked to five sellers in the same neighborhood who were trying to sell, but I'm picky about who I work with and the homes I list. And none of the homes I have sold because of their expectations were not reasonable. Or well, they really didn't want to sell, just they were testing the market. They're still on the market. So how about you guys? What are your plans? Where would you like to live? Nice, confident way of handling. You're admitting the truth. You never lie to them. You never make stuff up. But you're also not low status. You're high status because you feel confident. You feel good. Now, what you notice there at the end, I use the QAQ technique. Let me give it to you real quick. This is a little bonus for you. Seller asked me a question. Well, how many homes have you sold in the area? And I answered it. But at the end, I follow up with a question. That means I stayed in control of the conversation. I maintain my high status and I control where the conversation would go next. Nice little technique. Let me give you a couple more. How many homes have you sold? Here's a good one. I'm glad you asked, Janice. You'll be first, my first happy clients. But I think the question you're really asking is, are you competent to sell our house? Can we trust you? Am I right? The answer is absolutely. Getting you the highest price possible and making sure we'll sell the property quickly and without any problems, it's really exciting. As you can tell, I've been jaded like many of these veterans who don't even work on weekends. Is there anything else that worries you? Separate myself from the competition, establish trust, and a QAQ technique. I answer their concern, follow up with the question. Is there anything else you guys are concerned about? I'm glad you asked the question. I align, never argue with them. Nice high status solution, okay? Let me give you the last one. You're too new. You're right. And frankly, I may not have all the answers, but I have an awesome team behind me, including our broker. So if there's anything we need, we have over 200 years of combined experience to tap into. Then again, there is no other agent who is as excited and as passionate about not just getting you the most money possible, but also making sure a few weeks from now, you're enjoying that cozy new home. Is there anything else that you're concerned about? All right? That's how you do it. Remember this. People do business with you because they like you, trust you, and respect you. That's it. Not because of years in the business, your marketing strategies, none of that stuff. So let me tell you about the daily success conditioning. This is something that, um, just like an athlete, an entertainer, anybody who is in a situation where high performance is required. And let's be honest, this can be a very tough, demanding business. Where just like Pam sitting in front of these clients, there's a lot at stake. Yes, the commission, of course, a lot of money. You're going to make eight, ten, twelve, fifteen thousand dollars if you help them sell the property. Your reputation, your business, but also how you feel about yourself, how you feel about being a good agent. A lot of it is at stake, and there's a lot of competition. You're never the only agent that the sellers talk to. Never, ever. Even if it's your Aunt Marie, doesn't matter. There's always another agent who's going after those same listings, going after the same leads. So you need to deliver your A game. So a certain success conditioning is required to be at that peak state. So let me give you a couple of things real quick that uh, will help you out. Oops, wrong slide. Let me go back. All right. So like I showed you, read good books. Condition yourself. Michael Phelps who won an Olympic gold medal in swimming. There was a one event, it was on Friday, one of the last events in the Olympics in China. I don't know, for those of you who are a sports fan, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. But uh, he was swimming his, uh, one of his strongest, uh, strongest uh, styles, and forgive me, I'm not a huge sports uh, expert, so I can't really name it. But what I do know is, Michael was on the blocks, the gun goes off, he dives into the water and knows immediately that something is wrong. 
And what was wrong is his goggles started to leak water. Now, Olympic event, probably one of his last ones, strong suit, everybody was expecting to win, major disaster. Think about that. Water flooding goggles. Normal, regular, average swimmer, done, deal. It's impossible to swim with water in his goggles. Something interesting happened. Michael not only finished that race, but he won it. And if I'm not mistaken, he even broke either a world record or an Olympic record. How is it possible? Conditioning. His trainer, his coach, used to turn off lights at the pool where Mike was practicing. He was prepared for all kinds of scenarios and for all kinds of situations. So when this happened, he simply knew how many strokes will it take to get to one side of the pool, do the flip, and come back. You got to do the same. You got to condition yourself. So what are some of the things? Read good books. Read good books daily. Cut back a little bit on the television. Do some reading. Books like this one will get you far. I recently finished uh, Awaken the Giant Within by Tony Robbins. Fantastic book. Untethered Soul. We talked about it in one of the last tune-ups. Read good books daily. That's number one. Number two, preview property daily. Daily go see what's out there. Active listings, pendings, recent sales, expires, all that. You need to know your market inside out. They will elevate your confidence. You will know what you're talking about. Market knowledge, so when you do a presentation, you completely understand what's going on. You understand pricing, floor plans, what helps to sell a certain property, what's in demand, all that stuff. So preview property daily. Number three, do something physical. Keep your body in a decent shape. Do yoga, exercise, go for a walk, do something. Stay in decent shape because that will help you mentally to deliver a fantastic presentation or dialogues, connection, phone call, whatever you're working on. Next, practice. Practice daily. Practice your dialogues, just like a good listing presentation. The, the examples and the role play I just did with Pam, that's some practice. Takes just a little bit of practice to know exactly what to say to for sale by owner, how to ask questions of an expired listing. What to do when a seller says, we want 20,000 more for our house. How do you handle that? Practice. Practice daily. Make it part of your routine. Put it in your calendar. Put it in your schedule. 20, 30 minutes a day with a partner. Practice. Very, very important. Next, surround yourself with successful people. Hang out with successful people. You want to be a wealthy, prosperous, rich, successful agent. Hang out more with those people. I'll give you an interesting test. If you, in your mind, do it very, very quickly. Take 10 people you interact with on a regular basis, your closest friends. Not counting your family, just the closest friends. Okay? Think about that. Who are your close friends that you normally go to dinner with and watch TV with and go to birthday parties and all that? If you average out their income, that's your income. That's your income. It's the law of association. Like attracts like. So if you want to elevate your income, one of the best ways to do that is start hanging out with people who are living the lifestyle you want to live. Those are some of the things you need to do to condition yourself constantly. Constantly stay on top of the game to do a good job. Okay? Hope that was helpful. Next, here is another email. Scripts and dialogues. This is from Henry. This is going to help you out. Henry wants to know, there's a lot of scripts that I've liked and can be beneficial to me. How does one remember all these scripts? Other than rereading the scripts until it's registered, or is there a method that you can use to memorize it more effectively? Really good question, Henry. So let me show you a very simple tool. You're going to get a set of index cards, just like these. It's a little stack with a ring, small cards. Now, let's say you have a, um, a dialogue that you want to use, an expired dialogue or for sale by owner dialogue. Let's say first contact. Remember the expired plus dialogue. Hi, this is Barino with Remax Community Realty. I'm sure not the first one calling about your house. Uh, kind of crazy all of a sudden, all these calls. Okay, so that's the opening. You take the index card, on one side you write expired first call, and then what you're going to do is write five, four, five, maybe six bullets at the most of the dialogue outline so that you remember. Okay? So you would do things like um, you would write the first, not the first one. Now I don't want to give it to you, I want your brain to come up with two or three words for each bullet that will help you remember it. And then you write down the entire dialogue outline like this, just so you have now a few bullets. Next thing you're going to do is you work with your partner. You're going to do your role play with your partner. You take your index card and you just go through the bullets and you have a conversation with them. And you're going to practice it over and over and over. Now, within about 21 days, about three weeks, this will be imprinted in your mind. 
Now you can do variations. If they say this, you don't have to say verbatim what's written on it. You already know how to react to it. But you have the entire outline still with you, so you'll never lose track. You will always know what comes next, and you will always know how to stay in control of the dialogue. Works really, really well. If you have a stack, you can have objections, most common objections, how to handle them, how to do the first contact, how to do a follow-up call, what to say when you're meeting seller face-to-face, -face, how to do the power questions, all that can be on one stack of these index cards. Very, very powerful way, very easy to remember. You will never sound like a salesperson. You will never be one of those annoying telemarketers or annoying salespeople where you know they're using a script on you. It sounds hollow, it sounds shitty, and it sounds unpleasant. It's not fun for you to use it, and it's not fun for the receiving end to receive it. So this is a much, much better alternative. Okay, now let's go to the phones. Hey, welcome to the show. This is Borino. Who is this? Hi, Borino. Hi. Who is Hi, this? This is Carl. Paul, how are you, my man? I'm very well. Um, I purchased a couple of years ago Burrito 2.0. Unfortunately, it sat on the shelf for a little while. Um, I recently signed up for Realty Juggler, and I got the, um, the 4.0 letters. I do not have 3.0, and I'm trying to get this thing uh, kicked off. I want to join the coaching. Uh, I'm feeling a little bit stuck. Please help me out. Okay. What specifically do you feel you need help with? Contact. Okay. Let me ask you this, Paul. Let's let, let's do a little bigger picture. Hold on. Let me okay. go on the big board. And this will help you guys out too. If you feel a little stuck, if your business is not where you want it to be, you can do a quick test to determine not only what is the problem, but how to troubleshoot it quickly. Okay? How to do that quickly. Paul, what color do you want? You want to be blue or red? Do you have a preference? I'm going multimedia on you. Blue. <laughs> blue. All right. Paul will be blue. So here we go. So. There are three moving parts to a profitable real estate business. So here is Paul's business. Paul, if you had a good year this year, how many deals would you like to close? What would make it a good year? 50. 50 transactions. Okay. So that means you need to do about 50 listings, right? Well, you need to do more than 50. Um, probably, let's, let's say 60. Well, here is how it works, Paul. Out of those 50, not every single one will sell, obviously. But some of them you will double end. Some sellers will become buyers, and some buyers will be attracted organically. So that number will be pretty close, if not the same. Make sense? Okay. okay. So let's do 50. Yeah. How many appointments do you need to go on to do 50 listings? 75, 80. So let's do 80. Let's be conservative. So that's 80 appointments in the next 12 months. How many leads do you think it will take to get the 80 appointments? How many leads? At least 300. About 300 leads, okay. So now, so far, year to date, what would you say? Give me a best guess. How many leads have you generated so far? So far this year? Yeah. Uh, just probably, probably 25. I just, came off, I just came off a situation where I was on a team. Uh -huh. The leads were given to me. I've only, been, I've only been on my own for about 30 days. Okay, okay. Well, look, where you are is where you are. It's good to know where you are because that way you can plot where you want to be in a very accurate way. But you need to first know where you are. So when we troubleshoot this, what does that tell me? 25 leads, you're going to be short on leads. If you're short on leads, you're going to obviously be short on appointments, which obviously you're going to be short on listings. So here are the three moving parts you need to focus on. Leads, appointments, and listings. That's it. These are the three moving parts to a successful real estate business, to a profitable business. There's nothing else. You generate leads. Leads through follow-up will result in appointments. Appointments through good listing presentation will result in listings. That's the whole equation. That's the whole secret to being a wealthy, profitable, successful agent. Leads to appointments to listings. So th this means lead funnels, systems. That's number one. Appointments means follow-up system. Something like Realty Juggler, something that will do this mostly on autopilot for you. And presentation means you get the presentation plus from me. <laughs> and you come to DC where I'll teach you in the weekend how to do a killer listing presentation. Presentation system. Okay? So those are the three things you got to focus on. So now, Paul, when you plan your day, you start with asking one simple question. What do I have to do tomorrow in order for me to get the leads 
to get the appointments and get the listings. What do I need to focus on? Well, given the 25 leads, we troubleshoot first your lead generation funnels. That's the first thing you got to focus on, is where, where do these leads come from? You should have three to four systems in place to generate your leads daily. Active and passive systems. Now, what do I mean by that? Active systems start with the low-hanging fruit. New expired listings, old expired listings, canceled, withdrawn. Second funnel, for sale by owners. Third funnel, open houses. Good way to generate both buyers and sellers. Last one, referrals. If you just do these, you're going to be busy, you're going to get leads. Now you can add to it direct mail, you can do postcards, you can do flyers, you can do CMA offers in the neighborhood, you can do online advertising, there's a bunch of other stuff. But start with the core ones, with the easy ones first. So that's one. Two is put together a simple follow-up sequence. Keep in touch with these people because majority will not be ready immediately. Even the hot leads, it's going to take a little time, going back to what we talked with Pam, you got to build a trust. You got to build connection with them. You got to build the status of an agent who is liked, trusted, and respected. So you're going to put together a system. Check out, uh, check Realty Juggler. They're a good friend of ours. We work together. We are partners. Uh, if you come on board, they will take care of it. They will give you three months of uh, free trial. Realty Juggler is a really good, simple system to use to keep in touch with your leads because your appointments will come from follow up. So that's two. And then three, master listing presentation. So when you do sit down in front of the sellers, you don't blow it. Because every listing you don't take, every presentation you blow is money out of your pocket. Not to mention, it feels shitty. Not to mention, you don't help people and they need your help. So you got to fix that. Again, good listing presentation, something you can master, you can learn fairly quickly. So that's a quick troubleshooting session for you, Paul. That's what I would focus on. So when you plan your days, when you organize your to-do list, what am I going to do today? The first question is, where do I get the leads? Who can I talk to who may be doing something either right now or pretty soon? So start with the low-hanging fruit I told you about. Put them on a follow-up. Keep in touch with them. Talk to these people. Convert them into appointments. Convert them into listings. Make sense, Paul? Thank you very much. Yeah, was that helpful? That was. All right, good. Good. That was Real Estate Rockstar Paul. He recently went on his own. I mean, it's, it's a scary when... All of a sudden, the leads that were handed to you, everybody just kind of babysits you suddenly on your own. Uh, it's not the easiest place to be in. Welcome to the show. It's Barino. Having a good time? Yes, indeed. Who is this? I'm Jackie in Virginia Beach. Jackie in Virginia Beach. How are you, hon? Doing wonderful. Thank you. Nice. How can I help? Um, I've been uh, using this uh what we learned in December with the W listing to um, target for sale by owner. Yes. Um, but I'm having an issue with their sense of, um, I, I guess they're challenging my my business and trying to take control. With the for sale by owners? What, what do you mean specifically? Give, yeah. me, give me an example. All right. I just had one. She caught me on Monday, told me, come, I'm ready to sign. After, you know, following up. Yes. Went to that then she said well um, I have to wait till the next day because I have to. And then she emailed me and asked me are you going to have a professional photographer to take pictures of my house because she's done all these upgrades it is a short sale mm -hmm. um, I don't we have somebody to take pictures but it's not like somebody you know that you would hire as a professional photographer sure so I told her we have somebody who would do it and um, the pictures will come out right she says well I don't like the pictures online, so you're not the agent for me. Okay. All right, Jackie. Here's the fundamental problem. Who was in control of the process, the dialogue, the decisions? You or the seller? Uh, well, not if you say it that way. It might have been the seller. No, it might have been. It was the seller. I want you to clearly see that, that the seller was in control. The seller was interviewing you deciding whether she or he, was it a man or a woman? Woman. Whether she wanted to work with you or not. And then decided on something so silly and so important to discard you. Do you see that? You guys see that? She made a decision. Now, this can be, do you have a photographer? Will you discount your commission? Will you list it at 350000 There are all kinds of ways they can do the same thing. But what she's really saying, she being the seller, is I don't respect you. 
I don't respect your opinion. I don't respect you as a real estate person. That's really what she was saying, Jackie. Wow. So what that means is, if you remember the previous, uh, previous drawing here I had on the board, you screwed up at the beginning. At the very beginning of your interaction with her, you set it up, you set yourself up as a low status agent. Can you see that now? Yeah, because I was being very, I was trying to be accommodating to her with yes. certain things. You oh, wanted, to you wanted to be liked. You wanted to be friends. You wanted to be nice because you wanted the listing. Now, I don't blame you. Many people make this mistake. This is not something you alone do. Um, trust me, most agents actually do that. That's why sellers have been trained to do this. Because who does the seller want? Somebody who is high status, who is confident, who knows what they're doing, who will take charge. I mean, think about it this way. Would you go, let's say you have a trouble with, with your, your teeth. A tooth is bothering you, okay? It's very painful. You need someone to take care of it. So you go to your dentist and the dentist will say, hmm, what do you think, Jackie? Should we use this little hook or this little hook? Which one would you prefer? What would you think of dentists like that? <laughs> You would run the hell out of that office very, very quickly, wouldn't you? Like, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Right? You wouldn't trust someone like that, would you? No. No. It's the same with the sellers. See, if I come in and I have a dialogue with you, let's say you're the seller, you're the first sell by owner, Jackie. And I said, Jackie, I'm glad you brought that up. Having a professional picture is very, very important. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to get together in my office for about 20, 30 minutes. And we're going to go over everything. How long would it take to sell? What is the most a qualified buyer is willing to pay you guys? I can share with you a little bit of my marketing, how we're going to get that right buyer. And then we decide. Maybe we'll like each other. Maybe we won't. Maybe we'll click. Maybe we won't. Who knows? But I promise you that after about 20, 30 minutes, I answer all your questions. You will make a good decision. Whatever that is, it'll be up to you. My job is to present enough information so whatever decisions you guys will make will be comfortable. You will know that's the best thing to do under the circumstances. So come on down tomorrow. I'm looking forward to meeting you. That's it. And if she starts asking me about commissions, I'm glad you brought that up. I have several commission plans available. I have a good marketing plan available. We'll go over everything tomorrow. Yeah, see, that's the thing. We've, we've had the whole process of the interviewing and all that other stuff. Right. She seems, and she's interviewing other people, but she seems to be, I mean, it doesn't make sense to be doing all this. She's doing a lot of um fixing up the house, painting, uh -huh. adding things to the kitchen for the short sale. Right. And she's not going to get any more for it. So, and then my, uh, I asked my broker, and she's like, it's a short sale. I wouldn't do the pictures because, and then it, stopped, it just kept like she's trying, yeah, I mean, we were fine up until the last minute. It looked like she was looking for an excuse to get out of it. And she probably was. I mean, this goes back to what we talked about with Pam a little bit earlier that doing the short sale is uncomfortable, it's unpleasant, and maybe she's just looking for evidence to support her decision not to sell and just let it go into foreclosure. Or stay where she is if she can afford it. What's the plan B for her? Yeah. You know what I mean? You need to know. Is it, will she lose the house? Is she behind on payments? Or she can just stay where she is. It depends. Yeah. But you need to know. That's where your ability to communicate, your expertise, your, uh, your skill as an advisor and a counselor, not a real estate agent, not just a salesperson, has to be top notch. Because now she can trust you, she can tell you. Because it's not about a photographer, Jackie. That's really not the real reason. That's not really the real issue. There's something else going on. And it's your job, your duty to really unlock what it is. Because maybe even she doesn't know. Helpful? Well, do you think contact yes? her again or, or you know, continue to market to her or just let it go? I would talk to her. Same thing. I would just grab a cup of coffee and say, look, let's talk. Because here's what I suspect. And I just suspect that I really don't have anything other than what I feel based on what you told me. She doesn't trust you. She doesn't see you as a competent expert. Whether you are or not doesn't matter. But that's how you are being perceived right now. Like she cannot trust you. You don't know exactly what to do to help her. That's how she perceives you. So you need to fix that. Make sense? Yeah. All right. Good. Thanks for the call, Jackie. That was good. Good luck with the listing. Let me know.
All right, welcome to the show. It's Borino. Who is this? Borino, it's Johnny B from Michigan. How are uh, you? My man, Johnny B. Haven't heard from you. What happened to you, dude? You're it listing what ski really, resorts I'll tell now? You, man. You're listing your stuff. <laughs> your stuff is so good. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> life, life has just gotten crazy awesome for me. I ended uh -huh. up uh, getting picked up by another brokerage, and now I'm sitting in another spot. And I went from averaging, you know, possibly one listing. To uh, now we have 13 listings on the book for this month. Look and, at Johnny uh, B. Damn, dude, and, that's awesome. Yeah. Very listed cool. my first resort, so that's my first multi-million dollar listing was an expired resort that I went after, and so Sweet. I listed that. So Sweet. What's the, going good up hold here on. Michigan. What's the, what's the commission on a resort? How much money are you going to uh, make? The commission check on that is going to be somewhere around, I think it's 32000 Nice. Very so, cool. Good for you, man. I'm glad things are going well. Awesome. But I have a question. So yeah. what ended up happening was um, my team, which was working with investors and then expired, uh, we joined uh, another team at another brokerage mm -hmm. that is handling uh, commercial. Yeah. So together we have everything. And some of our ideas have kind of, have kind of clashed as far as, as marketing, not in a bad way, but one thing that came up that was really interesting, and I just kind of wanted your opinion on it, yeah. is um, my partner, he, he likes to take uh, not insanely overpriced, but he doesn't mind taking an overpriced listing mm -hmm. because his viewpoint is right now where we're at, our market is shooting up so fast. Mm -hmm. So his viewpoint is, is that if he takes it, in a few months the market will have moved up and we'll have enough proof to show that that they need to move their price down a little bit, where we can meet rate in the happy medium. And I don't know if I don't I don't know. I've never really d done that approach before, so I kind of wanted to get what your thoughts and your idea was on an approach like that. There is no right or wrong to that, Johnny. Whatever works, do more of that. If this works for him, if he's getting uh -huh. listings and sales, it's fine. Keep doing it. I had an agent in my office older lady, knew everybody in town. A lot of her business was from referrals. She was notorious for overpricing listings and she would keep them for six months, a year, and just right, yeah. nibble, 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 nibble until the sucker sold. And she was mm -hmm. making a lot of money. She was very, very successful in doing this. I have one fundamental problem with it. I believe that in the core, it misleads the seller. Because no matter how the conversations goes about, well, we're going to try our price, but we know it's not going to sell for that much, the expectation is already set. And if it's set at, let's say, 475, even though you know it should be at 425, mm -hmm. this is what the seller now expects. And if they don't get it, guess who they're going to blame? The agent. The agent. It's always the agent's fault, no matter whose fault it is. And we know that the seller is the one who insists on a higher price. What it usually means, Johnny, is a weak listing presentation or poor setup before the listing presentation. Because if I come in as an expert and I can clearly demonstrate to the seller, this is the price we need to list it, this is what it's going to sell for, let's go, let's rock and roll. Now, there's a second part to that. If the market will catch up with 475 and I tell the seller, how soon do you want to move? How soon do you want to sell it? Can we sit on it for six months? Because if everything stays the way it is, and I don't have a crystal ball, I cannot make any promises. That's good. Mm -hmm. But based on the history, we are on an incline. And we may hit that 475 probably in about six months, if you're okay with that. If it's not a problem, then it's going to take us some time before we catch up. Then I'm perfectly fine with taking it at that price. Make sense? That makes perfect sense. No. Yeah, and that's that's a good approach. I think that's what will, because I've sat down with him, and it's not like he doesn't do his homework. And I'm merging him, trying to merge him into you know the 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 presentation plus, because there's nothing, there really is nothing like that out there on the planet. So uh, I've showed him what I have. He's just really technologically behind, which mm -hmm. is why it makes it a, a really good fit. But yeah, he. Uh, he does his homework and he does a good job. It just seems like he kind of, you know, uh, what the last time that I sat down with him, it, it just seemed like he kind of will cave into to, the, to their price. And when I when I did ask him about that, for uh -huh. instance, using your four seventy five, in six months from now, it might it's probably still not going to be at four seventy five. It's going to be more at four fifty. Okay. And that's where where he's aiming for is that sweet spot. So he can show that we've done enough work 
you know, over the course of these months between our videos, our marketing, and YouTube, uh -huh. that by the time the market hits that 450, these guys will just cave in. My worry on that is that uh, those are the people I usually get from using your system. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because cause they usually, you know, but, but when I brought that point up to him, he said, well, we're, we're, you know, he logs everything that he does so he can submit. We're really doing a lot of hard work. Yeah. Now it's just overpriced. As long as you communicate it to the people and you demonstrate to them what's going on and what the plan is, and it's going to come down to how bad do they want to sell and how soon. And if your expertise is, well, I know we're going to meet in about 450 in about six months from now. And you say it from the very beginning, you make it very, very clear so you don't look like an idiot or incompetent, it's okay. I, it's mm -hmm. not my style, but this really comes down to preferences. Just like for that agent sure. I was telling you, she was, dude, she was making a lot of money. Because, now, she didn't have a lot of happy clients. You know what I mean? Mm. Some clients were mm -hmm. unhappy because they still blamed her. But she was making a good living doing that. So you need to make a choice. My choice, my preference is, I like working with sellers who want to sell now or pretty soon. I like to be very honest with them and I like to price it based on what I believe would be the best price to get it sold now. If I work with the seller who says, well, I don't, don't care, we can wait a year if it's going to take that much to get our price, that's cool. I just don't like working with sellers like that. Mm -hmm. Right, sure. And which, which, like you said, for him, would be perfect because he can just keep working with them and, sure. and I, can, I can just continue doing what I do. Yeah, yeah, and that's perfectly fine. I mean, you know, there's more than one to skin a cat. I just feel like working with sellers who want to do something now, they have a high uh, core drive and emotion, they're excited, they have a very specific goal where they want to live, they have a house in mind where they want to be, makes it a lot easier, makes the negotiation easier, makes them more realistic, they will do the fixing if it needs to be. You get some inspection reports where something needs to be done, they're more flexible. It just makes everything much easier. Fantastic. Yeah. Perfect. So, oh, Barino, I gotta let you know too. Yeah. Our uh, one year ago, we did my my business tune up personally. Yes. And he asked me where I'd be in a year from now, and I can't wait to send you my numbers, man. Really? <laughs> Is it good? Are things going well for you? Oh man, it's it's when I started looking at my numbers from the last time that we uh -huh. talked. Uh, from now, like I said, I can't wait to share from uh, you know from my one year what happened. I'll, I'll shoot you an email. I'll do a video and throw it up on Facebook. Please do. Oh, that would be outstanding, Johnny. Are you coming to DC in June? Would I'm love to see you. I'm gonna try to make it out there. Would love to see you because it was great to see you last year. We had a good time. Yeah, it was, it was a lot good. of fun. Hey man, I'm happy to hear that. How's the baby? The baby's doing good. Second baby arrived, so that's uh, and he's good and healthy, and nice. everything's good there as well. Congratulations. That's good to hear. See, and Johnny, you had some rough, rough beginnings, right? The start was a little, little rocky, wasn't it? Yeah, and you know, I tell people all the time. I looked into every system that was out there, mm -hmm. and I actually bought a few of them. But there was only one system that you know I went back and forth on your system for six months yeah. on whether I should pull the trigger to make the investment. It was the best thing that I could have ever done. Oh, good, good. Thank you. And, Thanks and, for that. And yeah, in, in the beginning, you know, you always feel weird because you know any anybody's system, it's always a weird thing. But man, when you just when you just do this stuff. You know, it's just incredible. And I got picked up to be brought out here and put into this awesome position that I'm in right now yeah. based on the style of marketing that I d have done. Mm -hmm. And realistically, Bruno, I stole it all from you. So, <laughs> <laughs> All right, Johnny B., rock star from Michigan. Good talking with you always, man. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Good question. Great call. Hey, welcome to the show. It's Barino. Who is this? I'm Richie. Hi, who is this? Hi, Richie. Richie Parada. Richie, how are you? Pretty good. Uh, I uh, I had several short sales and regular sales. I did a killer uh, listing presentation. Uh huh. Um, the analysis afterwards, they just weren't ready. They're fifty percent holding on to their house. They're fifty percent uh, trusting me because I only saw them once, and uh, I. How do you get, my question is, how do you get a, uh, a repeat uh, going, o going with them and having coffee and talking to them? How do I uh, get to, to yes. do that? Yeah, uh, how, you met with them once, you had a little conversation with them, you would like to go back, chat with them some more? Is that your question, Richie? Yes. Okay, 
keep it really simple. I would call the house Richie, it's Barino with ABC Real Estate. I'd like to swing by this afternoon for a few minutes. I have some questions. There are a couple of things I wanted to go over. I'll bring some coffee. What's your favorite? Wow, that is simple. Simple is good. Simple works. <laughs> yeah, you answered my question. <laughs> good. Keep it simple. Let's do it. All Keep right. Keep it simple. All right, give it a try. Thank don't you. overthink it. Thank you. You know, you don't need to give them 20 reasons. You say, well, there are certain things I need to discuss with you. Last time, there were some things that left open. I'm sure you have some things that you'd like to know. There's a couple market updates I need to give you what's going on in the neighborhood. So let's get together for 10, 15 minutes. A couple of them, you know, they wanted to move to South Carolina or Florida, and I yeah. set them up with agents there, and they're emailing back and forth, but they're still dragging their feet. And, and I kind of kind of expected them to just uh, call me, but uh, and then I send them things and what's going on in the neighborhood. And, yeah, very good um, point, Richard. Let me just give you one, one quick little tip there. Be careful. Waiting for people to take action, come to you, is very passive. People are distracted, people are busy, people are uncomfortable talking to salespeople. And if they can have an excuse or reason not to call, they will not. It is not something pleasant in a situation like that. So you need to take an active role. The reason you need to do it is because, Richie, warning, you're not the only agent they talk to. There is somebody right. else. And if that somebody else will take an active role, they will say, look, I know this is not pleasant, but by waiting, it's not going to buy us anything. It's going to make things more difficult. And the decision will be here whether it's two weeks from now, a month from now. So let's just get it over. It's like a tooth. Once it's dead and bad, let's get the sucker out so you can heal. I will help you. Uh, I will walk you through the process. I've done this many times. I help nice people just like you every single day. That's what I do. So let's get together for a few minutes and go over everything. I'm not there to pressure you. My job is just to give you plenty of information so you guys can make the right decision. But I think you're ready to make that decision. That's it. Good. Yes? Helpful? Uh, uh, the one, uh, two of them, the, the wife is very motivated. Uh -huh. and the husband says, well, if, the, if you have some uh, uh, buyers, just bring them around. I says, well, that, that's only a minute uh, part of selling your house. Right. Uh, and, you know, I, I almost said, well, this is dead. I'm not going to further it, but uh, I, I think your idea is just to... Uh, invite myself over. I would. I would just, or invite them to the office. That's another alternative. Or just go. Good. Just go. Stop by Starbucks. Pick up a couple of coffees. Knock on their door. Coffee delivery. Make it humorous. It's fine. <laughs> be playful a little. You know, this doesn't need to be super serious. You can have okay. a little humor built in. You know, it's all right. Like I used to have a box of little Tic Tacs. Yeah. And I would have a sticker on it, the seller's, uh, seller's medication, and I would tell, tell them after the listing presentation, I said, you're going to worry a little tonight that, oh, my God, we're selling a house. Take two of these. And I would hand them the Tic Tacs. You know? <laughs> and it would make them laugh, it would release them, but it would also prep them that when they do get these doubts, and many do, I know what I'm doing, they can trust me. You know, So you can do something like that. Right. All right? Helpful? Thank you. Thank All right, you. good. Right. That was Richie. Thanks, Richie. Good luck with the listings. And who is this? Is this George? Hey, Moreno, George. George, how are you, my man? Oh, uh, wonderful, man. How are you? Always good talking with you. What's up? Oh, okay, um, I have two questions for you. Yeah. All right, the first question is, um, I'm hearing this a lot over the phone when calling inspires. Um, uh, when you get to the point where you ask, you know, have you relisted the house? They say no, but they say, um... No, but we have a person we're going to go with already. Th you know, thanks for the call, but thanks for the call. And then that's pretty much the objection that they give. Okay. So is your question so how, how to how handle it? Yeah, how do you handle that? Okay. So you're an expired listing. I'm calling you. Is, mm -hmm. that, is that the scenario, like a first call expired listing? Yeah, first call expired listing, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, George, hey, it's Barina with ABC Real Estate. I'm not the first one calling about your house today, am I? Uh, no, you're not the first one. Yeah. Got a it's kind of crazy, calls, isn't it? <laughs> well, first, nothing. It's kind of quiet, and all of a sudden, everybody wants to list their, your house. Everybody has a buyer for it. Where were all these agents when the house was up for sale? George, let me yeah, ask you a question. It, it, yes, sorry, go ahead. No, it, yeah, same thing I'm asking. Yeah. Uh, quick question. Have you relisted the house yet? Um... No, we haven't, but um, we do have someone we're going to go with already. 
So, but, uh, thanks for the call. Absolutely. So, where are you guys going to go to once the house sells? What's the plan? Where are you guys going to? What's going to be the dream destination? Um, well, we need to downsize at some point. Uh huh. Have you found a house yet? Anything nice? Um, no, nah, we haven't. Well, I haven't. I haven't found a house yet. You haven't? But um, it's going to be somewhere, stay close in this area, but I just haven't found a house yet. I see. So what do you like most about living in a smaller home? What, what excites you? What do you expect to have there that you don't have already here? So what am I doing, George? Notice what I just did. Um, I, I didn't give a just, damn about your, we have somebody in mind. I didn't care. It didn't matter. I kept going with the conversation. I stayed with it, and I just go through the whole dialogue. Did you notice that? Okay. That I completely... Yeah, 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 I did. So here's how I did it, George. I acknowledged it. Oh, good for you. It's good to have somebody you can trust. Where are you guys going to go? QAQ. You asked a question or posed it as an, as an objection. I addressed it and I answered with a question. Okay? And I just kept going with the dialogue. Why? Here is why. Here's the big revelation. They either say, we're going to go with the same agent or we have somebody else in mind already, which may be true. There may be another agent that they're considering. That's fine. What do you have to lose at this point? Absolutely nothing. So if I have a conversation with them, my objective will be, let's just get together for a few minutes, and I understand you already have somebody in mind. No harm, no foul. Just stop by, say hello, shake your hand. You can put the name to the funny accent and to the face. I'll drop off some info for you. Who knows? Maybe you'll interview more than one. It won't hurt. Very low pressure, no pressure, soft, friendly approach. That's all you got to do. Okay. okay? Now. Think about okay. it this way. Okay. How many listings have you had where you took a listing, had it on the market for six months, then you let it expire, wait a month, and relist it again? How many have you had like that? Uh, not many. Zero. None. None. It's not done that way. Nobody does it that way. If you have a listing that you have a little hard time selling, only one of two things happen. Either the sucker expires and you're done, you're dead, and sellers hate you, or you're going to extend the listing and you're going to try to reduce the price or do whatever it takes to get the property sold. Mm -hmm. So when they tell you, oh, we're going to go back to our same agent, no, they won't. Maybe they think they are. What they're really saying is, well, so far, this is the guy we trust the most, is our current agent. But if somebody better comes along that we like, trust, and respect more, somebody who where we feel like this person can definitely get the job done, we are impressed, that's the one we're going to go with. That's really what they're telling you. And it's the same with we have somebody in mind. Often they just use it as a brush to get rid of agents because they know most agents don't have an answer, don't know how to handle it. Oh, okay, good luck. And they hang up. Mm -hmm. You as a high status, confident agent who's not really attached to the outcome, say, yeah, good for you. And you just keep chatting with them. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now this takes a little yeah, practice. Yeah. You know, this, you got to practice this a little, but you can make it very smooth and very pleasant and very engaging conversation because at the end when you say, well, let me just stop by for five minutes, say hi, I will shake your hand. Drop off some info for you. Who knows? Maybe down the road you decide to interview more people. Okay. It's hard to say no to that because it's such a soft approach. There is no thread. It's a little baby step. And that's all you're doing. You're taking them through little baby steps. So let me show you how the process works. This works with Fizzbos, expires. It's the same thing for everybody. This is where the lead generation system we talked with Paul with is so important. So here is how you walk them through it. First baby step, you make a contact. That's either a, uh, which camera am I on here? <laughs> That's either a phone call or you stop by if you don't have their number. A little baby step, mm -hmm. you have a little conversation. Ask a few questions. What am I building there? Trust. Am I determining their emotion? Core driving emotion. After the conversation, ask some questions. I need to determine, are these people worth working with? Is it a saleable listing? Do they have a strong desire to move? Then I'm going to do a little visit. Meet them in person if I can. Again, more trust, more questions. Okay? Then I go into power questions. That's where the connection really happens. That's where real truth come out. We don't want a bigger house. We don't want a smaller house. There's something deeper about that. A lot of emotion and very deep co connection, strong report connection and trust. And then I decide either appointment, follow up, or I'll drop them. And that's the process. That's the simple process. That's how you walk them through it. And no matter what they sell along the way, as long as I'm taking them through these baby steps, they're going to come along. 
And at the end, I'm going to decide. Let's get together. You guys clearly want to move. You definitely would benefit by having a smaller house. It would be good for you. Let's get the smaller house. We'll get together for 20, 30 minutes. Go over everything. I'll explain to you everything. Answer your questions. We'll chat and then we'll see. Maybe we'll shake hands and work together. Maybe we won't. Or you put them on a follow-up. Or you say, no, don't want to work with these people. Or I can't sell their listing. That's the process. Okay? Sure. And that, this, this is the process you take with every seller you have. Every seller lead. Now, this can be a matter of minutes. This can be a matter of a couple hours. This can be a matter of weeks. It just depends. What does it depend on? Right here. Core driving emotion. How intense is their pain or their pleasure to move will determine how fast you're going to walk them through the process. There may be a seller where you get on the phone, you see them in an hour, and you walk over the listing. That's totally possible. Happened to me, happened to many of my students, happened to you guys. There may be a seller you talk to today, you're going to put him on a follow-up, you have an appointment a year from now. That's possible too. It just depends. It's going to come down to this. How will they benefit by selling? How bad do they want it? How strong is the urge to, to live somewhere else? How, is, how much pain do they have because this house is so monstrous and it costs them time and effort and money to upkeep? will determine how quickly you're going to walk them through it. But the process is always the same. Always the same. And notice how it always links to trust, 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 more trust, all the way there. Yeah? Helpful, George? Yeah, yeah, yes, definitely, definitely okay. answering questions. So when they say things okay. like that, just keep talking, keep chatting with them, be cool. Okay. Okay? All right, so the second thing is, yeah. um, if, you, if this is a new aspire and uh, you're really not in your market and you, you're thinking about bringing maybe a more, um, somebody who's more comfortable working with working their market, um, when you go on for the first visit, is it important that they come with you that first trip or can you just kind of um, include them when you go visit and then bring them, you know, if you decide to go to it for a second visit or a listing appointment or whatever? Is this another agent in your office that's helping you out? Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. I have a better suggestion for you, George. Become the expert on that market. Become the expert. Otherwise, one of you will be the fifth wheel there. Either he doesn't need you or you don't need him. To become an expert mm -hmm. on the market doesn't take a whole lot. You study the market daily, you preview daily, you watch what's going on, you check out properties, you talk to neighbors, you get to know the schools, you get to know who buys there and why, what are the properties going for, what is the biggest drawback, what are the biggest benefits of living there. And within a few weeks, you know everything there is to know about it. That's a much better solution because it's your business. Run it your mm -hmm. way and just get the expertise. And it really comes down to just previewing a lot of properties and studying the market daily. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And what are some other things? Yeah, well, you know, you need to know where the shopping is, where the schools are, where the bus stop is for the school, you know, school bus, that kind of stuff. Stuff that average buyer wants to know, things that affect the value of the properties. What is the crime rate? All that, all that stuff. But you can do that within a few weeks, four or five weeks, and you should definitely know a neighborhood. Yeah? Can you do it? Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Of yeah, course can. you can, George. You're my student. You're a rock star. Come on, man. <laughs> well, of course, there's not that much to it, you know. Right. It's just you have to do okay. it diligently, you have to do it daily. That's really the secret. Right, right, right. Consistently, yeah. Yeah, Definitely. exactly. All right, man. Thanks for the call. All right, man. Thanks so much. All right. Really Always nice. good talking with you, George. And 818 area code. This got to be Los Angeles area, right? It is. <laughs> Who is this? How are you doing, Bruno? I'm doing great. Who is this? My name is Alex. Alex. Uh, I, yeah, I joined your program a couple of months ago. Cool. I'm Welcome. Coming back and forth to make it work. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Good to have you. Where are you selling, Alex? Where are you? Are you in the valley? I'm or in where? San Fernando Valley. Yeah. San Fernando Valley. Good. Awesome. awesome. I, my office is in the studio city. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Yeah, I was in Hermosa Beach for many years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nice. How can I help you, Alex? Uh, okay. Uh, back to the lead generation and how it's, uh, which I really don't know how did you come up with the name, but I love it. <laughs> which one? What name? The Howitzer. The Howitzer. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> military background. <laughs> <laughs> I know I was in military myself. Okay. But anyhow, let's get to the number thing. Yeah. 
We were talking about the 300 leads with the other gentleman yes. at the beginning of the call. Yes. If I'm, I'm trying to not to get overwhelmed, I'm trying to get get everything in simple and uh -huh. start to work from somewhere. So based on the program, we are supposed to get 10 leads and work on it for 10 days. Okay. So we can have we can work with 30 leads in a month. Right. And in a year, it will be like 360 leads. Mm -hmm. Is that considered 360 leads or not? It's possible. I mean, there are a lot of variables, a lot. There are about a handful of variables in it that will impact. Mm -hmm. First, let me tell you a difference. Alex, you're going to have a blue marker, okay? We're going blue on you. <laughs> so, first okay. thing. Now, the video is delayed by about 60 seconds, so don't panic. I'm you not in front of the computer. <laughs> oh, okay. Is, is, is this called recording? Yeah, it's recording yeah. and it's. Okay. Uh, you're watching on YouTube or you're just on the phone? I'm on the phone right now. Okay. All right, Alex. So, here's how it works. First, you have leads. You need to know the difference between an actual lead mm -hmm. and a potential lead. Okay. All right. Now, here's the basic difference. There's only one, but it's very significant. Actual lead is a lead you talk to. That can be an expired listing. You knock on the door or you had a chat with them on the phone. Okay? Potential mm -hmm. lead is the same expired listing, but you haven't had a conversation with them. You don't have their number or you knocked on the door and nobody was home. They're so good, both are good leads, both will result in a listing. The only difference is with an actual lead, there's a different call to action. Your marketing, your letters, postcards, communication, in general, with an actual lead, the call to action is appointment, listing appointment. Okay. With a potential lead, because you don't know their situation, you don't know what's going on, you don't know their core driving emotion, you don't know anything about them, the call to action is a conversation. Mm -hmm. Right? You want to chat with them yeah. before you invest time in like the CMA and all that other stuff. Now the conversation could be five minutes. You go, holy shit, these are good people, very motivated. I'm ready to go. Turn them into an appointment. You can do that, but it needs to be in a sequence. So that's the difference. Now, 300 and some leads. Some of them will be potential leads. Some of them will be actual leads. It is easier to convert an actual lead into a listing. Obviously, because you already have certain relationship established with them, you understand their situation. These people, potential leads, you can mail them, you can market to them, but without a conversation, you need to bump up the numbers to get the same result as with potential leads, as with actual leads. So whenever you have an opportunity to talk to somebody, if not in person, at least on the phone, use that opportunity. Because not only will you have more information and you can make a better judgment, a better decision whether you can help these people or not, but the moment you have a conversation with somebody, like you and I right now talking, there's right. more trust. There's right. more trust. Is that making sense? Yeah, absolutely. So now, if you do the Howitzer, Howitzer, by the way, is just a blitz marketing system where you contact a lot of expired listings, both new and old, using the Expired Plus system. Some of them you right. will have a conversation with, some of them you won't. Focus on those that you can have conversations with first. Market to those that you don't have a conversation with, you can still turn them into listings. It just requires more contacts, higher frequency, and more time to convert. And you will still not get as good of a result as, as you get from an actual lead. But they're still worth going after because sometimes you just can't talk to these people. No phone number, disconnected phone number, do not call list, you knock on the door, you go back a few times, you still can't reach them, don't drop them. Just mail them the sequence, keep in touch. It can take between 5 and 15 contacts. That's the sweet spot, the conversion sweet spot. 5 contacts. Now this, this can be a combination of personal visits, conversations, emails, thank you cards, uh, follow-up letters, postcards, just listed, just sold, market updates, that kind of stuff. But it can take up to 15 to convert them. And you still will, of course, not convert them, all of them, but enough to make it worth your time. Did they answer your question, Alex? Yeah. Uh, the, the other question I have is uh, why on the system you mentioned like three letters. What's going to happen after that? Should I just keep going with the other letters? Well, the letters in the Expired Plus library, for those of you guys who are my customers, they are designed yeah. for potential leads to make your phone ring so you can make a connection with them. Notice the call to action to that is Let's talk. 
Give me a call and let's chat. Right. Once you have a actually the follow-up changes because your call to action changes. Okay. Then your follow-up mailings will be market updates. Those work really, really well. Thank you cards. Just listed postcard, just sold postcards, home tips, improvement tips. That's a good follow-up. Open house invitations. I see. Make sense? And you always, always, ah. always want to combine your follow-up with phone calls. You always want to maintain that relationship with them. Quick call. You give them a quick call once in a while. And then set up appointments with them. Okay. Yeah? Did sure. they answer your question, yeah. Alex? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah good. Hey, welcome Very aboard. Much. Keep Thank me posted. All right, man. Good talking uh -huh. with you. Thanks. All right, guys. Your coach, Barino. I have a final invitation for you. We're going to do this workshop. You heard me talk about it. I had some slides prepared for you, but we're going to skip that. What I wanted to tell you is this. I do only maybe one, maybe two. Last year, I only did two live workshops. That's it. I'm not one of those guys who travels all over the world and does these presentations and stuff. I operate from my home, from our, our home office here. Because you guys are busy. You come on my webinars. You do the videos. And you do my systems. But there's one thing I cannot teach you uh, just uh, on the web or even on a video like this one. We need to get together in person. And when I talked about those three moving parts, if you remember, the third part is one of the most critical ones. Because it doesn't matter how many leads you have. It doesn't even matter how many appointments you have. If you suck at the listing presentation, if you're not getting most, if not all, listings with the people that you meet with, something is wrong. And we need to fix it. So that's the bad news. Every time you lose a listing, like you heard some of these agents, they went on appointments and didn't get the listing. That's money out of the window. That's commissions, especially in this market where the number of good listings is down and the sellers know they're in control, every appointment counts, every solid lead counts, every listing counts. So you need to be very frugal and very diligent when it comes to these things. So I decided I'm going to do it again. I did it one last year and we're going to do it once this year. We're going to get together for two days here in D.C. on the 14th and the 15th, which is a Saturday and Sunday on June. And I know it's a Father's Day. I'm a father. That's the date we picked because we needed to get this done. It was an ideal date to, to, for us to get together. There will be 24 agents that will come down to D.C. We're going to be at Hyde Regency in Crystal City, just outside of D.C., about four or five miles from D.C., from the White House. So if you want to turn it into a mini trip, mini vacations, you can check out our capital. It's a nice time to visit. We're going to start at 9 in the morning and we're going to work till 4 in the afternoon on nothing but how you communicate with the seller before your presentation, before your appointment, how to set the appointment, how to handle the pre-listing, including your pre-listing package, how to do the pre-listing interview, why it matters, what questions to ask the whole thing, what to do first four seconds when you meet with the seller face-to-face -face on your listing presentation, how to handle the entire presentation, how to go all the way to the listing contract. Now, this is not your regular workshop or a regular presentation, you know, where somebody stands on the stage and shows it to you and then you're impressed, you clap hands, and you write a few notes and you go home, feel good. We're going to have two video cameras point at you the entire workshop and you're going to be doing things over and over and over. That's why I keep the group so small because I'm going to be walking around talking to you, do this, don't do that, try this, say that, look at how this works. And you're going to be trying these different things in a very safe environment where there is not a $10,000 commission at stake. You're going to be trying different things. You're going to be failing at some things and feel very uncomfortable at some things until it clicks, until you get it. I don't make many promises, but I promise you this. You will walk away by Sunday afternoon at 2 p.m. a different person. Way beyond just a good, solid, killer, badass <laughs> listing presentation. You're going to be more confident. You're going to be more in control. You will know how to handle certain dialogues, how to communicate that high status I always talk about. That's one of the things I, I'm a big believer in. If you walk in confident, feeling good, in control, knowing that you can help these people, it's going to come across. You just need to communicate it in the right way. Not just with words, but we're going to focus on body language, breathing, eye contact, posture, your appearance. There are all kinds of factors that influence this. And it's one of those things. we got to do this in person. So you got to come down. You got to fly down here, or you got to drive down here like Johnny B. Last year, right, Johnny? You drove from, from Michigan all the way down here to be at a workshop. And you see the results now, pretty good. More than pretty good, obviously. So if that's something that interests you, you feel like you would benefit from it, you feel like you want to talk about it, you can do one of two things. You can either go to goborino.com. There's a link 
on their page. Just click on that link, fill out a little application. We charge a small deposit. It's fully refundable just to make sure you show up for a phone call. The next thing that's going to happen is Roseanne from my office will call you. We set up a 10-minute chat to make sure that the workshop is really for you. You're the right candidate. See, because I have such a small group of people, and we are about halfway sold out, by the way. But I want to make sure that you're the right candidate. It really is for you, and you will benefit by being there. Okay? So that's option number one. Or just email me, borino at expiredplus.com. And we'll talk. I'll be happy to help. And with that, my friends, we're going to wrap up another good, good session. I hope you enjoyed it. I really like doing these for you guys. I love interacting with you. I think this is really a cool way for us to, to connect, to help you out, help your business. We're going to do another one sometime in May, so we're going to get ready for that. We're going to have another W listing boot camp. That's a seven-week boot camp. You heard a couple of people talk about it. They took it. That's an online boot camp where we do, remember those three funnels I was showing you? That's what we're going to do. We're going to build your lead generation funnels, then we're going to build your follow-up funnel system, and then we're going to build your listing presentation system. All right. If you're coming down to DC, I'm really looking forward to chatting with you in person or working with you in person. It's going to be an exciting weekend. It's going to be a lot of fun. And um, I guess that's it. Go Borino.com, Borino.expireplus.com. With that, my friends, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for being here on the phone and being here on YouTube, being here on, on the channel. I hope you enjoyed this session. I enjoyed it very, very much. Your coach, Borino. Signing off. Let's go get them. Have a lovely afternoon, everybody, and I'll talk to you real soon. Thanks for being here. Bye.